All right, top five, another former Carolina guard, Caleb Love. Uh, there has been a lot of conversation about Caleb Love's redemption game. Uh, Arizona, the two seed in the West. They could, in theory, play North Carolina in the Elite Eight in Los Angeles to go to the Final Four. Um, they got a fun team there at Arizona. Tommy Lloyd has done great in the regular season, still trying to only three tournament wins so far, but he, again, is a two seed here. What do we think about Caleb Love's redemption tour? Is it possible? Do we see the vision? The, the, it's there. I, it could certainly happen, but <laughs> it's I, possible. I, yeah, it's possible. And Arizona fans are kind of finding out what North Carolina fans have known for the past couple of years, where it's either it's an experience, feast or famine. Most of the time this year, though, he's been much better as far as shot selection. His percentages are way up from last season. Tommy Lloyd's told him to be quiet a couple times. Like it's, uh, I think that marriage has been better for for everybody involved. Uh, right. Arizona, North Carolina, it's just worked out splendidly for both parties. Yeah, and I like Caleb Pac-12 Player of the Year, R.J. Davis, uh, ACC Player of the Year. It's kind of one of those things where both guys go their separate paths and they find their way. And it was the issue the entire time at Carolina. You had two shooting guards trying to play point guard, um, which yeah. <laughs> doesn't work in college basketball. It can work in the NBA. It doesn't work in college basketball so much. Uh, number four, he is the going to be, I guess, the back-to-back -back National Player of the Year, Zach Eady of Purdue. He obviously causes a lot of controversy with the foul calls, and uh, it's really hard to officiate what he does on yeah. a basketball court, but he is a giant a literal real life giant um, he is a mythical figure really on a basketball court uh, what do we see for Zach Eady and uh, can he kind of one sweet 16 he can kind of stamp his legacy by making a run to the final four yeah I, I think they will I, I think this is a year that Purdue finally does it uh, but here yeah it there's broke a their picture way. on yeah there's a picture on Purdue senior day where it's like Zach Eady beside Mason Gillis and Mason Gillis beside <laughs> um What's, it, what's that big guard's name that, that's from Pennsylvania? Well, anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, but they're all standing beside each other, and it's like he towers over these guys. He makes them look six foot tall. <laughs> Mason Gill's listed, what, six, seven? Yeah. Like, and he makes him look small. Um, it, he is a mountain of a man. What, what was it that um, the glider used to say? He's mm, a mountain yeah. masquerading as a man. And he is that big. He's that strong. He moves his feet, which is something that, like, there's a couple that like Big Ten fans are complaining about him. Like you can't penalize him just for being big. Yeah. Like I understand your guys are smaller. Like quit. Like he, he he's just bigger. He moves his feet. He plays legal. Like mm -hmm. he's just bigger than your guys. And as a result, your guys just bounce off of him, which is that's part that's part of the game. That's the reason Shaq was so great. That's the reason yeah. Kareem was so great. Bill Walton. Like they're they're just bigger. They're stronger. And there's nothing you can do about it. That's part of and basketball. You, Sorry, guys. And you gotta have you Sorry. gotta have bodies to deal with it. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. what it comes down to. You have to have the clientele and the depth to deal with it, or the the moxie to figure it out. I mean, the smallest team last year in the NCAA tournament was FDU. The tallest team obviously was with Zach Eady, and the smallest team beat the tallest team because they had a better strategy um, than most mm -hmm. teams. And I think that's why Tobin Anderson got so much credit last year. I mean, he did a great job coaching. So there are ways to beat the giant, but uh, you know, it's not going to be easy. And I think a lot of people get frustrated by that but Zach Eady um, an incredible figure in college basketball an all-timer because he's going to be back-to-back -back player of the year so obviously something that we're going to all be watching number three is a uh, not even in the men's tournament but I know we're all going to be talking about her Caitlin Clark uh, she gets a tough draw LSU's a three seed in the region so they're going to have to go UCLA's the two seed they're going to have a tough draw but Caitlin Clark is uh, she has kind of superseded the Zach Eady conversation uh, even on the men's side when we talk about stars in college basketball so she's number three on the list how much are we keeping up with Caitlin's uh, you know kind of rise this year uh and, and and just in general like do we think that there's a chance iowa could go make some magic happen in march are you asking me how much i'm going to be watching it yeah how much are you going to be watching it not much it's all right <laughs> it's, i, I yeah. don't do i don't do women's sports yeah. I, I this is going to sound bad i appreciate women's sports i just won't be watching it because i'll be so busy with the other 32 games and i know 16 games like i won't be watching it until probably the final four Sorry, guys. Right, I, I, right. It's not, it has nothing to do with the quality of the women's game. The quality of women's game is great. I just I don't have time. I it's it's honestly like uh, it's been it's been coming back to me. You know, people are asking me like, you know, how do you have it all scheduled out? And I'm like, I'm I'm doing my best. I mean, I'm going to try to watch these Iowa games as, as much as I can. But you're right, it's a lot of basketball. We're going to do our best to no, watch I it only all. Do, but... man, I, it has nothing to do with <laughs> whether or not I like it or whether or not it's good. I just don't have time. Like, yeah. Somebody asked me the other day, like, do you do women's basketball too? I'm like, no. There's 360 <laughs> some odd right. men's teams. I can't. You double that? Are you crazy? Like it's right. just it's not possible. Now, what what she's done is awesome. 
and, and she's fun to watch and she's a hell of an interview and all that. I just, I, I won't be watching because I don't have time to watch. Uh, number two, the thank God for Kim Kardashian. <laughs> was that a little too much honesty? Was that a little too much honesty <laughs> for the media? Like, I won't be watching. I just won't. I don't have the time. Well, I'll be doing shows. I'm doing we, a billion radio things. Like, yeah, we, I just won't we have need, time. We need some focus on uh, on the tournament that's at hand right now because uh, yeah. I think a lot of people are, are trying to tune out of it as best they can. But good news is that Kim Kardashian is tuned in. Number two, uh, there was a lot of players that I wanted to talk about. And luckily for me, Kim Kardashian signed them all to Skims deals. So the Skims All-Stars are number two. Um, and if you didn't see this, Rob Dillingham of Kentucky, Jared McCain of Duke, Hunter Dickinson of Kansas, Paxson Wojcik of North Carolina, the biggest upset of all, Donovan Klingon of Connecticut, Dalton Connect, Zakai Ziegler, Armando oh. Baycott, RJ Davis. Davis, uh, LJ Cryer, Fletcher Lawyer, Ryan Dunn, Joe Girard, Gerard Lucas of Nevada, Tyson Dagenhart of Boise State are all skims guys for the NCAA tournament, which means uh, we can put them all at number two. And now we can talk about all these guys throughout their run. So uh, thank you so much, Kim Kardashian. What, what did you think when you first saw the slam cover of these guys all in skims? I mean, did, did that just break, break your brain a little bit? Because uh, it was so hilarious. It's, it's a weird thing. It's <laughs> underwear. Like, it, it's just a weird thing. Like, you want to talk right. about an all-time package deal, the baycott Wojcik combo to get a skims deal is yeah. high level. That's a, I, that's a negotiation. Negotiating on Baycott's part. Let's put it that way. I, I love that. Uh, shout out to TJ Besner for making that possible. Yeah. Armando and RJ just like they just took the skims deal, but then uh, they somehow got Paxson on the cover of the Slam uh, magazine. And, and apparently it was like last year they were on Sports Illustrated. And obviously, you know, they they recreated the image with Dean Smith. They end up not making the tournament. So I, I've heard that there's some superstition where like they didn't want to be on a on a magazine cover again, which is very funny that they were like, okay, Paxson, you, you go suit up I there that. and you and you get on the cover. So I, I thought it was actually a, a sly move, especially when you got the other blue bloods on the cover. So uh, shout out to the skims, all stars. All right. We got to number one, uh, number one on the board, the number one character. He is a maniac of his own making. Uh, he has been a guy that is around college basketball, a name in college basketball, not that Hurley, but this Hurley, he is the head coach of the defending national champions, Dan Hurley. Um, he has had quite an electric season. He has, uh, Asked multiple fans to come down and fight him if they so want, if they so choose. Um, he has won a lot of basketball games. He's running one of the most efficient offenses in the country, and his team just has a lot of fight, a lot of toughness, and they just keep coming in waves. Uh, what do we think about Dan Hurley, and what do we expect to see? Do, is there a chance that Dan Hurley can repeat for the first time since 07? Yeah, there's, there's a mega chance. Elite painter, mm -hmm. Danny Hurley, who's yes. taking up painting in the <laughs> Loves offseason. Painting. Uh, he's, threat he's, a, he's a painter. In his downtime, he's ready to fight fans in game time. So like, mm. he has been uh, – look, Dan's great. He's one of my favorites. Um, love seeing him. His energy is infectious. He is a crazy person, but I mean that in the, in the most loving way possible. That's how these guys are wired. They're super competitive. It drives them for 36 game days a year or 40 game days a year. And uh, the, think about how lopsided these guys' lives are. Think about this. Mm -hmm. For 300 and what, how many days in the year? 356 days a year, whatever it is. Leap year, whatever. And <laughs> <laughs> they have 40 game days. 40. And that's if you play in the national championship game. There, You have to be an insane person. So, uh, no, he is a lot of fun to watch. He's entertaining. He's a basketball genius. Uh, he's figured a lot of things out. And he's figured out what's successful in March, too, which is a lot of fun. So, uh, I, I do think they have a, as good a chance as, as – we've seen since Florida to uh, repeat. Yeah. And I feel like Villanova was the one uh, that a lot of people thought in 2017, they could repeat. They ended up running into that one, eight game. Nigel Hayes had that nice little baseline move for Wisconsin. They get the upset. I feel like if you're Connecticut, the game that they should be circling and worrying about the most is that eight, nine game. I feel like that's the one that trips up the, the reigning, you know, national champs, the number one seed that that's yeah. the one that always gets you because there's usually a very talented power team that's there at eight or nine. So I would watch out for that. They could get FAU this year. Um, it turns out that that actually, was the one B there's really one star of college basketball. We all know his name. He is the one a he is of course, 
TV Teddy Valentine. He is back in the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2019. Uh, yes, that is correct. Teddy Valentine will be working the NCAA tournament back in 2021. Uh, he had a, a positive COVID test. He did not want to leave the bubble because he wanted to, <laughs> to uh, officiate the Sweet 16 game. Um, and then he got basically got shadow banned for the for the next two years. But he is officially back. So the number one character in this tournament is TV Teddy Valentine. Terrence, what say you? Uh, are you excited to see TV Teddy back on the sidelines? What region is he in? Give any idea. I mean, he's going to be. Uh, I mean, God knows. I don't have it. I don't have his uh, assignments yet, but uh, he will be. I mean, let's hope he has Purdue. You know what I mean? Let, let, let's no, hope that he has hope, some game where it's going to be controversy. Let's hope he has UConn. Could you imagine TV Teddy and Dan Hurley mm. going at it? You want to talk about oh, one A man, and one B? That's if right. they have the same game, holy cow, that would be electric. Could that you would be amazing. Turning his back. Could you imagine him turning his back on Dan Hurley like he did Joel Berry? Do you remember when he did that? Oh, Insane. that would be if he did that to Dan yeah, Hurley. That was, Dan Hurley would come unhinged. He would become unhinged. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to talk to him. Oh, that'd be yeah. great. You know, I, I, I think I think Dan Hurley versus Auburn uh, in the Sweet 16 with TV Teddy on the, on the call would be electric because Bruce yeah, Pearl man. is the man who invented character counts uh, with the ultimate two characters there. Um, that's the kind of matchup we love to see.